Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 4, Lesson 9 on similar triangles and parallel lines. This is the last lesson in Unit 4 on dilations and similarity, right? And we've done a lot, a lot of work with them. Um, we're going to be doing more work with similarity in future lessons, in future units, and much of it is going to be tied to parallel lines. So today, we're going to try to look at the connections between similar triangles and parallel lines, and let's start right away in the first exercise. So first, a little bit of review of parallel lines. Exercise number one. In the diagram shown, lines M and N are parallel and are crossed by transversal line R. Which angles that are created by R and M are congruent to angle one? All right, so I want you to try to remember back to all the work we did with parallel lines, and we spent something like three or four lessons on them so far. In this picture, there are some of the angles up here that are congruent to angle one. Which ones are they? Pause the video now and see if you can recall this. All right, well, angle three is congruent to angle one, as is angle five. So angle three is congruent to angle one. Those are corresponding angles. All right. And angle five is congruent to angle one. And if you recall, those we called alternate interior angles. So corresponding angles, two angles that show up in the same place on two parallel lines, right? I suppose the upper right hand corner, right? Those things are congruent. And two angles that are on opposite sides of the transversal and inside of the parallel lines, those are also congruent. A lot of students will think about these as the angles formed by a Z, you know? Those are also congruent. We're going to be watching for both types of angle pairs in the problems that we work on today. So let's get right to it and see some connections between parallel lines and similar triangles. Exercise number two. In the diagram below, lines BC and DE are parallel. Point A is located such that triangle ABC and triangle ADE are formed. Letter A. What angle in triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADE marked with a single arc. Mark this angle as well with a single arc. All right, very simple. I got this angle down here, right? And that's angle ADE. I want to know an angle in triangle ABC that's congruent to this one. Pause the video and see if you can write that angle down. Well, it happens to be this angle right? Because those two angles are corresponding, right? They're in the same place when cut or crossed by two, by when you have two parallel lines that are crossed by a transversal. So that would be what? Angle A, B, C. And again, that's an issue of a corresponding angle. Not that the problem asked you to write down what kind of an angle it was, but it's corresponding. All right. Letter B, very, very similar. Let's take a look at that. What angle in triangle ABC is congruent to angle AED, marked with a double arc? Mark this angle as well with a double arc. All right. Same thing. Pause the video now and try to find the angle in the triangle up here that's congruent to that particular angle. All right, well, again, it's corresponding angles, right? That angle, which is angle ACB, is congruent to angle AED, again, because it's corresponding, right? They're both in the upper left-hand corner when these two parallel lines are cut by this transversal. Okay, letter C. Why must triangle ABC be similar to triangle ADE. Why do those tri two triangles have to be similar? Pause the video now and see if you can explain. 
Well, it's by that angle-angle criterion that we saw, I believe, in the last lesson, right? Um, so the two triangles the two triangles have two pairs of congruent angles. So it's called the angle-angle criterion. If two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, the two triangles have to be similar. All right. Now let's see if we really kind of understand that similarity issue. I've reproduced the diagram down here. Let's take a look at letter D. If a dilation with a center at A was used to map triangle ABC onto triangle ADE, which of the following ratios would be the correct scaling factor? All right, this is really cool. So we know that if two triangles are similar, then we can map one of them on top of the other one, other one using a dilation, and then possibly we might need like some translation, reflection, rotation. In this case, we don't have to, right? In this case, if we pin down point A, which is a point on both of the two triangles, the question is, by what would we need to stretch out triangle ABC so that it landed on top of triangle ADE? See if you can look at each one of these four ratios to pick out the correct one for the scaling factor. All right, well, what I'm gonna do, and this is really helpful in a problem like this, right, is I'm gonna draw the two triangles separately. Here's my smaller one, ABC, and maybe here's my longer one, ADB. Right? Now, I know that my scaling factor has to be a length on my new triangle divided by the corresponding length on an old triangle. So let's see if it's choice one, BD divided by AB. Well, BD isn't even a length on my new triangle. So again, let me just write this down. K must be a length on the new triangle, which is the larger one in this case divided by the old triangle, which is the smaller one. And again, I say new and old because I'm trying to take this one and stretch it into this one. So that's sort of the bigger one's the newer one, smaller one. So BD isn't even a length on this one. Let's try to take a look at two. DE, right, which is this, divided by BC, which is this. And that's my winner, right? Because DE corresponds to BC and it's on the newer triangle divided by the older triangle. I know these are just horrible pictures of the two, but it's choice two. Now, just really quickly, let's look real quick at the other two choices. AC divided by BC. Well, AC is right here. BC is right here. You can't divide a side in, you know, you can't divide the two sides of like the smaller triangle to get the scaling constant. That'll never work. And finally, AC, divided by AE, well, at least those two sides correspond to each other, right? AC and AE. The problem is AC divided by AE would be great if we were trying to go from the bigger one down to the smaller one, but it doesn't work if we're trying to go smaller to bigger. All right, let's keep going, see what else we can do with parallel lines and similar triangles. Exercise number three. In the diagram shown, points P and Q are located on the sides of triangle EFG such that PQ is parallel to FG. Letter A. Mark an angle in triangle EFP, uh, EPQ that is congruent to angle F with a single arc. Also, letter B. Mark an angle in triangle EPQ that is congruent to angle G with a double arc. All right, so I'd like you to do exactly kind of what we did, did in the last case, which is I want you to find an angle in EPQ that's congruent to this one, and an angle in EPQ that's congruent to this one, and mark them with a single arc and a double arc. Pause the video now. All right, well, this should be pretty easy after the last one, right? This one, or these two are congruent, and then these two are congruent. And again, this is just an issue of correspond, uh, this is just an issue of corresponding angles, right? 
You know, now again, we might have to extend these lines for you to really see them, but hopefully you'd kind of see that, all right, you know, if I've got these two crossed by this transversal here, right, then this angle and this angle are showing up in the same place. And likewise, if I kind of extended those and drew this out, we'd see them in the same spot. All right, letter C. Redraw the two triangles separately below. Label the sides with the known measurements. All right, always, always a good idea. So let's, let's redraw the two triangles. We're going to have EPQ. That's my smaller one. E. P, Q, let's label it with whatever we have, which is 10 here, 6 here, and I'm going to throw on those two angles with their marks. Then the bigger one, right, which is F, E, G, right, and what does it have? Well, this length is 15, right, when I take that 10 and the 5 and I add them together, and that's actually all I know. I don't know anything else besides the 15, but you see where the 15 comes from? It's just the 10 plus the 5, right? That gives me the length of EF, which is 15. Let me just make that one a little bit farther away from the 5. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Okay, now let's look at letter D. What is the length of side FG? Show how you found your answer. All right, well, this should be almost old hat by now. I want to know the length of side FG. Why don't we call it the variable x? Now I'd like you to set up a proportion that allows us to solve for x. Go ahead and do that now. All right, well, we could use the ratio of relatively positioned sides or the ratio of corresponding sides. I think I'm gonna do relatively positioned sides this time. This time I think I'm gonna do 10 divided by six is equal to 15 divided by x. Let's do it that way. So let's bring this thing up. I'm going to do 10 divided by 6 is equal to 15 divided by x. I can cross multiply. 10 times x is 10 times x. 6 times 15 is um, 90. Yep. Divide both sides by 10. And x, which is what we're looking for, is equal to 9. All right. Never hurts to throw a little proportion problem in there when you're dealing with similarity. The real key is that we know that the triangles are similar based on the fact that we've got those two pairs of angles that are congruent to one another. Angle, angle criterion again and again. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. Exercise number four. Lines B, C, and D, E are parallel. Point A lies on the same line as B and D, and lines are drawn creating triangle A, B, C, and triangle ADE. Mark two angles in ADE that are congruent to the two marked in triangle ABC. All right, this is pretty easy. Why don't you pause the video now and mark two angles in triangle ADE that are congruent to those two angles that are marked in ABC. All right, yet again, it's all about corresponding angles, right? This angle, corresponds to that one, and since we used a right angle to mark that one, we'll use a right angle to mark that one. All right, and that's all it takes to know that triangle ABC and triangle ADE are similar to one another, the angle-angle criterion. Now, letter B. What would the value of the ratio AE divided by DE be? All right. Pause the video now and see if you can figure out what the value of this ratio is, but might I add, I don't know what the length of AE is, and I don't know the length of DE. That doesn't mean I'm going to try to find them, all right? In fact, there isn't enough information on this picture to allow me to find them, but I can figure out what that ratio is. Pause the video now and see if you can figure out why. Well, here's the thing. Because this triangle is similar to the sort of the larger one, right, then the ratios of relatively positioned sides are going to be equal. In other words, AE divided by DE is going to be equal to AC divided by BC. 
All right, let's kind of write that down as an equation. AE divided by DE, which is what I'm looking for, must be the same as AC divided by BC. And because we know those lengths, we can say that ratio must be equal to 3 fourths without knowing at all the value of AE or DE, we can say that when I take AE and I divide it by DE, it's got to be the same as AC divided by BC. It's that simple. The ratio of relatively positioned sides on two triangles that are similar or two figures that are similar must be equal. Let's do one last problem. All right, here we go. Exercise number five. In the diagram shown, segments AE, BF, and CG are all parallel. What three angles, sorry, what three triangles must be similar based on this information mark congruent angle pairs? All right, see if you can answer letter A. All right, well, why don't we mark the angle pairs now, right? This angle would be congruent to this angle would be congruent to this angle. This angle would be congruent to this angle would be congruent to this angle. And again, the beautiful thing here is now we've got three triangles, right? CGD, BFD, and AED that all share two pairs of congruent angles and therefore must be similar. So let's, let's write it down like this. Triangle A, E, D must be similar to triangle B, F, D, which must be similar to triangle C, G, D, right? Those three embedded triangles must be similar to one another due to those parallel lines. Letter B, what other ratios of sides must be equal to AE divided by DE? All right, see if you can answer this question. All right, well, AE divided by DE must be equal to BF divided by DF, right? So definitely BF divided by DF, right? But there's one more, right? AE divided by DE must also be equal to CG divided by DG. And of course, those two have to be equal to each other as well. And again, that's just that issue of relatively positioned sides. The ratios of relatively positioned sides must be equal to one another. All right, let's wrap this up. So the point of the lesson today was to kind of review some properties of parallel lines, but also show how parallel lines can oftentimes come up in problems that involve similar triangles. Or maybe the better way to put it, similar triangles can oftentimes arise in problems that involve parallel lines. We also did a lot of work today once we identified the similar triangles in then being able to talk about the ratios of relatively positioned sides being equal to one another. And boy, is that going to become important when we start to discuss concepts like the slope of a line. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems. Thank you.